you know, the next big event that we're hosting is coming up on June 10th and June 11th. It's a two day weekend, 100% virtual course, which reminds me that, you know, everybody who is signed up for that course gets pretty much the best front row seats. Nobody's blocking (laughs) you and we'll we'll do our best to make sure the live demonstrations go as as clearly as we can with the hand camera. But, uh, you know, recently, just actually last month, you had delivered a, another weekend virtual course for the California PT Association. Thanks to Pearson. I always love supporting the CPTA courses where you come and teach all of us Californians. I got this question earlier this week from one of the participants who yeah. came to that CPTA course. How is the June virtual course going to be different from what you had just done in the April course? Well, in, in part, you, you, you put your finger on one of it. It was just me. And the whole purpose of, of those courses, for the, for the most part, is to let people know about how we're looking at movement and how effective it can be. So I try to provide the background. It, it, it's an orientation, but some some participants are already thinking along that line and they get a little more out of it. I do demonstrations and I always think this is really a useful aspect so that you can see in many ways how people can even use telehealth eventually. Now, in the ideal world, you'd see somebody up personal first off, but it's possible to look at somebody. And the demonstrations are intended to <clears throat> to let people know what we're looking for, basically what the exam looks like, because an important part of what we also put together is a, a very systematic exam. As I was saying, you can't take one part out. So we have worked up, and again, I can't underplay or overplay the importance of my colleagues in helping to work all of these things these things out. So everybody's pitched in, they've used it, we've tested it, it's gone on and on how to use this systematic exam. So in in the course for the California chapter, I show them basically what the exam's like, but these are a, a couple demonstrations. It, anybody that can take away how to do it from that is totally amazing because it I think it takes a little more education than that and a little more exposure than that. So (laughs) here come the values of what we're trying to do with the course that Learn Physical Therapy is sponsoring. And and that's, we're we're trying to teach people how to do these things. Where we have breakout sessions and we have demonstrations so that participants will be able to see to, to report on what they see. We'll be able to give them feedback on whether they're making the right decisions or not. So even though it's at a distance, there's going to be every attempt for them to learn how to do this exam, or if not, and not in total, but to get enough of a baseline that they have an idea of what they're looking for. And, you know, and, and unfortunately, just from my time with all these continuing education programs that fewer people are coming out with a a good set of skills on how to observe movement or or specific muscle functions. And and I think there's, there's so many wonderful things to learn these days in physical therapy education. And there's so much of a push for productivity that being able to really learn to apply the anatomy and kinesiology that you got in physical therapy school is, is, is a super challenge. And I, I think what, what we're doing is being able to show you how, I, I always use a slide, I like a slide that says, muscles don't take kinesiology. <laughs> and that's because you, you learn all these things about, well, the, the quadriceps extend the knee, but so do the hamstrings. Now, yes, they're a knee flexor, but if your foot's on the ground and you extend your hip, you extend your knee. There's there's every way in which other muscles substitute, other actions substitute, and that's what you also have to know. So we're trying our best. And then the other thing that I think is valuable, as I said, when I, for the California course, it was me, but you're going to be, people taking the course will see the interaction from my, my colleagues as well, the other faculty at WashU. And I think that's also a very valuable experience because you hear different perspectives 
though we're all looking for the same thing, their way of explaining or looking at things can also be very beneficial as compared to just how I might choose to explain things. So sort of in a nutshell, we're working hard to show people how to do it, to, to make steps on the way of being able to do an exam. And, and, and this time we've decided to, to focus just on the low back so that we can do that as thoroughly as possible. We've come to grips with the idea over the years that unfortunately we throw out too much information. It's kind of like people are like deer in the headlights. Like, where did all that come from? Yeah. And sorting it out. And, and, and I know myself, I would be, I would be the deer in the headlights if I was encountering all that information, which again is not typical information that, that people have. So that's why we're broken it up so that this time we'll do it the best we can in getting the idea about the back, the lumbar spine. And then in the next course, cover the hip, which, and, and I, I think, I don't, well, I, I mean, I'm gonna say it because I believe it, that I think there are few other therapists that have as much insight as to what's going on in the, in the hip, the, not, not the hip joint replacement, but in the young adult hip that, that we've been working on for years. And I think th that there's so much to be gained from these insights on how we're examining the, the hip. And it's not just a little simple, basic routine. And then I think the other thing that, that we're doing that I believe I hopefully will be essential for the profession is using diagnostic categories. That all of this examination, all this movement things results in labels, movement related labels. And it, it's always my hue and cry here that here's all these people becoming doctors, going to school for seven years, spending lots of money to get their DPT degree, but nobody looks at them as doctors. And, and I believe that, I, I mean, I feel guilty about it because I was one of the people pushing so hard for the clinical doctorate degree. And, 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 and re my reason was when I got my PhD in monkey business, cat business and monkey business, the doctors had no trouble asking me for recommendations on their patients that they thought ought to have physical therapy. So I thought, well, golly, if everybody's got a doctor label, there'll be more equity in doctors looking at physical therapists than there, there is. Well, that, that has not turned out because we haven't taken on the other trappings of being a doctor. Because my, my overall belief, at least that's the way it is for me, if I go to a doctor, I want to get a diagnosis or I want to know what diagnosis do I have, to, potential diagnosis do I have to worry about? And I think until we clearly show that we are figuring out something, an orthopedic surgeon that Paula Ludwig works with wrote in an article that I think was so valuable that physical therapists look at patients in a different way. They're going to treat them in a different way. They need a label that reflects that different way and trying to identify which tissue and I don't know what I'd do anyway if I knew which tissue it was except find out what movement made that tissue go bad so th that's a very long answer to a to a short question but I think those are all the things we're trying to accomplish is to show people how movement is a cause there's the orientation thing which is kind of the thing I did for the California chapter this is what it's about. This is the way it looks. If you can learn this in two days, whew, that's mind boggling to me since it took like a lot of years and maybe I'm just retarded, but I know I'm a slow learner and, and we're trying to really now take it the next step and show people how, what exactly these exams like and, and how they can learn to do it. Yeah. Well, gosh, I, I, I would be the slowest learner in, in this room here. So, but, you know, and, and the, I think the other big difference is in the CPTA webinar, you were able to do fantastic telehealth evaluation. So the, you weren't exactly with the painful subject in the same yeah. room. And in the, miles away. Yeah. <laughs> in the June virtual course, they're actually going to be subjects with low back pain that are going to be in the room with you. So we actually get to see where you place your hands, what are you feeling? How are you doing each of those systematic examinations? I think that would be very helpful too. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes. That's what I say. You, you really get to see what it would be like in the, in the clinic 
in the physical therapy service where you're really examining a patient and and then also teaching them what to do what what the treatment is all about yeah yep. Yep. And we've got a ton of virtual lab assistants lined up for everybody. So we'll look forward to that.